So uh, I'm going to introduce a man who needs no introduction, which seems odd. Uh, but I'd also like to do a couple of things. One is, um, in the previous years, we've actually done a kind of like sit down, fireside chat, uh, Matt's and I, for Q&A. Uh, because he, Matt's is doing his keynote at the end this year, uh, we're kind of going to do the more traditional Q&A. So uh, we'll have some handheld mics, and we'll, we'll kind of do some lineups on the side for people who want to ask questions. I've got some questions already seated in the old noggin, if no one gets up to ask questions. But I really would love for y'all to stand up and actually ask questions. Um, so um, towards the end, as Matt is finishing up, we'll have uh, some volunteers out with the mics. Uh, you can, you'll find them. They'll sort of be in the aisles as per usual. Um, and the other thing that I would like to do is uh, give Matt a little present. Um, so uh, <laughs> uh, so um, a long time come Rubius, um, who's actually not here this time, just coincidentally, uh, is Bruce Williams. He actually did all of the design for a long time for, um, for uh, RubyConf. And uh, he uh, recently started a very strange hobby. Recently, he started gem cutting for fun, uh, which is like, you know, he w really wanted to just hunch over a diamond bit for 14 hours at a time, staring at a tiny little rock, basically. But he loves it. And uh, he wanted to make Matt's a ruby. And so he did. So he sent it with us. And he, wanted, he, would like, he asked me if I would present it to Matt's on behalf of a present from the ruby community. So. Uh, the, the plan originally was to have a nice display box. Um, we actually didn't ha have time to get the display box, so we're still working on that, and we'll get that to Matt's. I might, I'm actually going to be in, in Japan in about uh, three weeks, so I might bring it to him then. So. Whoa. <laughs> so it, it, is an, it, is an, it is an actual ruby. Uh, you know, Matt, if you'd like, you can show it off to people later on. Don't lose it. <laughs> Bruce, Bruce said that he was, he was hunched over his machine for 14 hours at a time, cutting it. it was very, it's a very hard rock stone to cut, so I wanted to present you with that. It's been uh, wonderful having you here at RubyConf. It feels like we've been doing these for, forever now, and we love, we want to keep doing them. So it's a, <laughs> we thought it was a very nice present. So I'll show it. Yep. And now, without further ado, Matt. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you for the present. <laughs> Hello. Uh, I'm Matt. <laughs> Who is the first timer? Raise your hand. First time of the conference, right? You are the, may, we have many the first time of the conference. Yeah, praise them. Who, who first met me, saw, saw my face uh, in real, you know, face to face? So, yeah, somebody, yeah, some, yeah, nice to meet you, <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> good, to see, good to be here. I'm Yukihiro Matsumoto, or Matsumoto Yukihiro in Japanese. And then, uh, of course you don't read this. And then, uh, and, uh, I had uh, the name in my Chinese characters, then uh, this is my name in Chinese characters. But, uh, but uh, you know, these names are pretty difficult to remember, you know. So, just call me Matt. <laughs> I am Matt. I'm a father of four children and a dog. <laughs> And a motorman. So some, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some often treat me like a demigod or something like that, <laughs> but uh, I'm not. <laughs> uh, in reality, I'm the creator of this universe. <laughs> Yeah, maybe you don't know that, but uh, this is simulated reality, <laughs> like the Matrix. So in reality, we are living like that. Not really. <laughs> but 
I am nice. <laughs> At least I am trying to be nice. Uh, but uh, of course, I sometimes get mad. <laughs> so I feel trying the. I'm trying to be nice, but I feel sometimes anger. So the being nice and the anger, the, the conflict in my mind sometimes. The anger is a very problematic or troublesome uh, emotion. So the Lali Wall, who is a friend of mine and the creator of the Pro language, like this, this guy, <laughs> uh, once stated three virtues of a programmer. The, the first, uh, the three virtues of a programmer. The three virtues, the laziness, impatience, and hubris. <laughs> laziness means the quality that makes you go to great e effort to re reduce overall energy expenditure. It makes you write labor-saving programs that other people will find useful and document that what you wrote so you don't have to answer so many questions about it. <laughs> this is laziness. Impatience. The anger, the anger you feel when, you, when the computer is being lazy. This makes you write programs that don't just react to your needs, but actually anticipate them or at least pretend to. And hubris, the quality that makes you write and maintain programs that other people want, want to say bad things about it. So the laziness, impatience, and hubris all related to anger. So these three virtues makes you a good programmer. So the anger itself is not really a bad thing sometimes. So controlled anger is a good thing sometimes. So it's, it could be a source of motivation. So you can easy, safely feel anger if it's kept inside of you. So anger, the publicized anger, is infectious. So if you feel anger, so your neighbors tends to be feel anger too. So that is kind of the a source of conflict, war, or troubles. So and, then, and, and the good news is niceness also infectious. So the nice, being nice is Ruby's great virtue. So we often use the term minus one. <laughs> so. That stands for Matt is nice, and so we are nice. And then they made sticker like this. <laughs> Am I look like that? <laughs> yeah. I, I often use these kind of the anime avatar, though. So, but uh, I'm not an inventor of Minasuan. The concept of Minasuan was invented by this guy. You know him? He's a Martin Fowler, who is the famous for the inventor of the refractoring and the microservices and the many other concepts. And he also invented the concept of the mean swan. So the, and I like these terms, not only because it is a kind of interesting term, but at, at the same time, the, that pronunciation sounds like a minasan in Japanese, which stands for everybody. So be nice, everybody be nice, together, each other. It's the greatest virtue of the Ruby community, I believe. Yo! Yeah, actually, I really like the conference, this conference, just because you know, everybody was so nice. Not only because I'm a creator of the language, <laughs> but uh, you know, we are uh, at the, you know, it's kind of like a feel same nationality. Oh, the real nationality may be different. I'm a citizen of Jack, the country of Japan, and then maybe you guys are from United States, Europe, some of the other countries, or maybe even from the space, maybe. <laughs> but, uh, but in spirit, we belong to the same community and the same nationality. 
the geek community, geek national, <laughs> geek nation. <laughs> so I'm the creator of the Ruby, the, and the lead designer of Ruby. So recently, I, less on, I work less and less for C Ruby, but uh, uh, I still uh, make decision of the language, the behavior and the specs. So I'm also the lead programmer of MRuby, which uh, we have several uh, sessions in this conference, like uh, uh, MRuby for embedded devices and embedded in applications. So the, my recent news is last week, we have released the Ruby 2.3 preview one. Yeah. And we will release uh, Ruby 2.3 on coming Christmas. Yeah, as a Christmas, this Christmas, you mean? <laughs> yeah, we are not, yeah, P community, <laughs> unless something bad happens. <laughs> yeah, we have done many things since the last release of 2.2, so highlights will be that we will ask several methods, including MNRV or grep v, v, which stands for the grep minus V. So the non-Unix people will, will confuse about that, but the minus V option invert the uh, behavior of grep. So the, using the NRV or grep V, so finds the elements that does not match to a pattern, right? So we also added the hash with the fetch values, so that you can extract the values from the many multiple values from hash. So it's kind of a strict version of hash values that. We also added the numeric positive and negative, which behavior is very obvious. <laughs> <laughs> so we added the hash comparison, so the less than equal less. Less, less than, uh, less equal, uh, greater than equal, and greater uh, operators. But uh, not specific operators, just because uh, they are not comp com comparable in the sense of, say, new numerics. We also added the hash to proc method, uh, which is go like this. So that means that hash can be a treat as a map in real map you mean mapping uh, as, a, as in uh, the block, uh, block parameters. I also added the, the did you mean gem as a default. <laughs> so did you mean means, so if sometimes you make a typo or a name error, so the Ruby interpreter guess your intention, then ask you that did you mean size or you, you made this right or something like that? So just like Google does. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a small step toward the collaborative uh, the programming <laughs> between man and machine. Anyway, and we have added the frozen straight little pragma which is uh, that we can add a magic comment to say the, all the strings, all the string literals in this file will be frozen. So the, uh, in this example, A equal ABC, the, the string ABC will be frozen. So you cannot modify it. So you don't have to make a copy each time it evaluates. So the, the uh, modifying the string will be error. So this is kind of incompatible. But uh, so only if you can add the, this magic comment at the top of the file. So it runs slightly better. It performs slightly better. But uh, the biggest benefit of this uh, magic comment is we can safely ignore freeze pull pre request, say Rails. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we also recently added the safe navigation operator, which is similar to question dot in Swift and Groovy programming language. We, but uh, in 
Uh, instead of question dot, we added at ampersand dot. Uh, we, in, at the first time, uh, we have added the dot question. But uh, dot question, yeah, just because, you know, the, we cannot use the question dot because question is uh, at, the, at the end of the method is uh, the valid method name in Ruby, unlike other programming language. So the, we cannot use the question at the first hand. So the, we made it reverse to dot question. But uh, after writing some sample programs uh, with uh, this new operator, it was like uh, this one, user dot question, name dot question first, or something like that. So I find out it was very psychologically confusing. <laughs> you know, the, the question dot and dot question is too similar to distinguish and to, memo to memorize. So the, I just uh, give up. And then I, I introduced a very new operator, and the dot, and which we called lonely operator. <laughs> just because, look at this figure, and then you can see the someone sitting on the floor looking at a dot <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> by himself. <laughs> now you don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we use uh, the ampersand dot as, the, as like this. Instead of writing u ampersand ampersand u dot name, ampersand ampersand u dot name the first. So we can say you ampersand dot name ampersand dot first. So it's much shorter, cleaner, and easier, I believe. <laughs> uh, in relation of, of this chain, so we have introduced the, the dig method in, in ha, arrays and hash, which is the, for example, suppose we have the data uh, structure like this, so from, say, JSON further. So the, we can retrieve, we want to retrieve the data, the symbol users, and then number zero, but, and name. So that's what we want. But in reality, so the, any of them can be null, you know, so that we have to, data dot users ampersand 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 ampersand. <laughs> but uh, uh, instead of uh, using that kind of lonely operator, so we introduced the, the dot dig method. So the, for array and hash, you can dig into the, the chain of array and hash. So the, it's, it's kind of shorter and easier. Uh, these are highlights of the, met, uh, the language change in R Ruby 2.3, and uh, it's faster. So in, real, in, in fact, since Ruby 2.0 in 2000, uh, I mean 2013, so I, we released the, the version each year, uh, the 1.2.1 uh, in 2003, 2.2 2 in 2004, 2013, and uh, uh, 1.3 in 2015 this year. And uh, each year, each version, we in, uh, improved the 5 to 10% faster. So this time, we improved, uh, improved a little bit. Not 30% faster, not two times faster, but uh, 5 to 10% faster. So it's, it's quite nice. So the, this has been done by core developers, including Koichi, Nobu, and Eric Wang, who, whose handler is normal person, who is, who is uh, 
far from normal, though. <laughs> <laughs> and many others. Yeah. So the Ruby is no longer my language. In, so in 1993, when I had started the Ruby project, this is a, this is my language. I'm I'm the only one working on the language, working on the, the virtual machine. Oh, I mean interpret, interpreter. But uh, uh, now we have many many people, many many programmers, developers working on the language. Many people propose a new feature and they come up with a new idea which I haven't think of. So the Ruby is no longer my language, and it's a community effort now. So the, I really, really appreciate to the community and the developers that right now we have more than 90 commit, core committers, 90 people who have the privilege to access to the central repository of Ruby, C Ruby, I mean. So then the, in addition, Today, I released MRuby 1.2, and uh, I fix, we fixed a fi uh, bunch of bugs, and uh, but, uh, we improved the build process of MRuby, and uh, it's more stable than the, the previous versions. But uh, you know, that, that's all. <laughs> no, no big syntax code change or not anything to the MRuby. And also, we recent, uh, I recently worked for the language named Stream, which is kind of experimental toy programming language. So you can check out uh, github.com as a stream to see the, how, to, how my toy is. And uh, I, I say, in, for the, uh, as, uh, I say, it's not usable. It's just a toy. It's a proof of concept tool, but uh, it exists. <laughs> so this is my introduction. So the last year, I gave a keynote presentation in this conference, so titled The Feeling the Shock, which means uh, we have to keep moving forward as an open source community. Otherwise, so uh, okay, we have to keep moving forward to attract the community, so to encourage community to work together, otherwise we will eventually die. Just because it's the nature of the open source software community. So we need change. We need change to survive. But uh, yeah, yes we can. <laughs> we must make changes to keep going to survive. We have to make changes, a lot of them to keep moving forward, but at the same time, the changing itself is a cost and a pain. So when, how much pain do you, uh, do you pay, do, do you suffer when you upgrade Rails 4 to Rails 5? <laughs> yeah, we normally don't like pain. Yeah, I know somebody like pain, though. <laughs> but we normally don't like pain. The, the, here's the contradiction. So we have to make changes. Even though it has cost, it, has, it, uh, it caused pain. But uh, we don't like pains. Users don't like pains. So we like changes. We don't like pain. The, the, here's the challenge. I'm a language designer. The design is hard just because we have to uh, address those kinds of contradiction and conflicts, uh, conflicting demands. And uh, in the biggest challenge of designing something is we don't know what we should make. Uh, this is the poster in the Y Combinator office. And when Alan Kay, the small of fame, visited the, their office, he, so it says, it originally says make something people want. But uh, he strike out want and write down the need. So we shouldn't make what they want. The, the, the famous Henry Ford once said, 
if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses instead of cars. You know, the, the users don't understand what they need. So what, they need horse, they need faster horse because you know, their mindset is fixed with the horse and cabins. But uh, the, in reality, the Henry Ford uh, the publicized, he, he did not invent it, so, but uh, uh, the, he, he produced a lot of cars in, in the cheap cars, so the, you know, the horses were swept away from the world. So make what changes their lives. They create something that have never existed. So in that sense, design is hard. Because the future is unknown, we don't know about the future. We can't predict it, we can expect it, but in reality, future is unknown. And because the situation changed, so when I released the Ruby in 1995, so some said, we don't, we don't need the object-oriented uh, features in scripting. So some said Ruby was too good to be a scripting language. What does it mean? I don't know. So too good to be a scripting language. Anyway, but uh, they were wrong. They were wrong. So nowadays, Almost every language, including scripting language or toy language, are object-oriented programming language, uh, except for some, say, functional programming language. So uh, anyway, uh, it's, this is the evidence that is quite uh, exp forecasting or you know, the telling the future is so difficult for most of the people. I didn't ask them what they want, so, okay, do you want scripting language? I will make that. It, this is not the way I started Ruby. I created what I wanted to see in the future. So, I wanted this. I want this in the future. So, and then some didn't understand what they saw. So, okay, object -oriented. you created Ruby. This is quite nice language, it seems, but uh, you know, it's too good, or we don't need this. So, the four, the first 10 years of the, the Ruby's life, uh, very few people uh, find Ruby very useful. The many people find Ruby interesting, but uh, uh, they, they had never said useful for the first 10 years. But I didn't care. I kept working for 10 years. So uh, then we had Rails, the thanks to DHH, or the web age has come, so the Ruby became new normal, and then my prediction was right. And then, like, we, create, we have created new normal. It's not really I created the, the new normal, but uh, we, as a whole programming community, and the uh, Ruby community, the Python community, Perl community, all the open source language communities created new normal. So, that kind of new normal, uh, it pre uh, we, can't, we could prepare that kind of new normal. So this is the secret of Ruby's success. But uh, suppose you have created great software, but uh, it's not the end of the, the development. Uh, because the future is unknown, again, <laughs> and because the situation changes, the uh, system gets older soon after creating. Too bad. <laughs> a system will go bigger, more complex as the time goes by, and we will become sick of maintaining old code. We have to adapt changing situation anyway. It is good excuse to slow away old code. So we have to make changes, otherwise the system eventually dies. So, but uh, changing is pain, changing is cost, but uh, Users hate pain. Contradiction comes again. The <laughs> contradiction often causes problems, like unfinished systems or a slow adaptation of the new system. So we have that kind of symptoms, like 
attention to this, throw away everything. Okay, I'm sick of this system, throw away everything. I want to cre create everything from scratch. At that time, they have the illusion that we could create cleaner systems if I try again, if we try again, or illusion that we could create system that performs better. But uh, and, uh, that illusion caused you the enthusiasm to pursue the boss. So I can, can I make this new system, the throwing away old system, and then strong enthusiasm. So, but uh, so if I try next, this time again, so we, I could, I should have uh, create better system. But uh, design problems are harder beyond the expectation, schedule delays beyond the estimation, development costs beyond budget, angry clients, project failure, ouch. <laughs> this happens to throw away everything, so with a different severity. And the at that time, and a lot of language, programming languages suffer more often, just because the language lives longer. So the, the, the world's first programming language is named Fortran, but uh, it's still alive. alive. And uh, the second old programming language is Lisp, and it, that still lives. The third, old, third oldest programming language is COBOL, that's still alive. So they are more than, uh, they are almost 60 year old. Whoa. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but they are still alive. So the, the programming language lives far more than, far longer than user application. So the, the programming language saw, faced that kind of programming uh, problems far more often than user applications. Case one, power five bytes plus six. <laughs> uh, power six project started 2000, year 2000, because they, saw, they felt some kind of stuck, so the, their changes, their evolution, uh, the slowed down for long, long years at the time of the year 2000. So as I said before, the open source community they eventually dies when we when they stop moving forward. So that is the reason behind they started Pro Six. So we have to do something new. They had to do something new. And then Pro Six inherited the Pro philosophy. Pro Six implemented from scratch. Scratch. That is the key. So we, they had the ambitious goals. And then they totally new syntax. Totally new virtual machine. And uh, 15 years has passed in this new year 2015. We don't have Pro 6 yet. But finally this Christmas, hopefully. Yeah, I met uh, Larry Wall at, in, in, the, uh, in last August in Tokyo in the, the Yacht End of the Power Conference and, uh, we, where I was a guest speaker there, interestingly. Though, and uh, he, he uh, declared the Pro 6, the first version of first public version of the Pro 6 is gonna uh, released in this Christ, coming Christmas, hopefully, uh, unless something very bad happened. Okay, probably need years to, but after releasing Pro 6, I guess uh, it would need years to become widely used. Uh, but don't get me wrong, I respect power community. Power people are very smart. The, what I want to say is that even they suffer, design is hard. Case two. Python 2 versus Python 3. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the in the power, bank, in power community, uh, the, they long had some, some uh, the dream of the something named the Pro 3000, the the their new whole new Python, the better Python with uh, any legacy uh, features or something like that. So the Python 3000 design policy is a reduced feature depl deprecation by removing all ways of doing things. So the Paul, uh, I mean Python language uh, evolved in the history of the long history of its. 
other language. And uh, in that, that history, they introduced the neat, new neat features that are overriding the old ones. But for the, comp the sake of the compatibility, so they have to keep uh, old, old features, old design, old class, uh, old uh, behaviors. But, uh, so they, the core designers, at least, do not like those kind of the old legacy behaviors. So they, ha they wanted the chance to remove all the reduce deprecations. So they wished they could release it before AD3000. <laughs> That's why they named it Python 3000. <laughs> they discussed for years, and uh, they finally started their project in 2006, and uh, they named it the, 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 the virtual pro project for Python 3000 to Python 3, and it was released in 2008. Uh, they didn't throw away old code. They uh, improved and they removed old code. So in that sense, so they are smarter in, the, in that sense. But uh, they introduced a huge compatibility problem. Uh, in 2015, Python 3 is still widely used. You know, the Python 3, Python 3.0 was released in 2008. And we have now, in, we are now in 2015, so but the Python 3 old version is still used. Uh, some even claim to give up Python 3 altogether. Whoa. And, uh, but uh, recently, Python 3 has adopted more widely, like compared to the two years ago or something. So finally. But uh, don't get me wrong, I respect Python community. <laughs> Python people are very smart. But even they suffer, design is hard. <laughs> uh, pitch community skip the PHP 6. <laughs> 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 yeah, they are smart. <laughs> JavaScript canceled the ECMAScript 4 twice. <laughs> yeah, they are very, very smart. Uh, similar things happen all the time uh, for the applications, for the systems, for the uh, everything, including programming languages. Ruby is no exception. We had uh, the issue where we had uh, Ruby 1.8 and Ruby 1.9. So the, back then, we had the, ish, the problem in performance. The, Ruby 1.8 has very, very naive AST uh, traversal interpreter, which I wrote. <laughs> That's why it was slow. <laughs> and uh, back then, the multilingualization, so handles the many en the character encodings, is an uh, issue. So the, the idea of the new version of the Ruby was one in two, year 2000. The, and the, the project itself has started in 2004. And uh, to address those kind of issues, so we introduced a new virtual machine, which, is, uh, which we named YALF, yet another virtu Ruby virtual machine. Uh, that means that around the year 2004 or something, we have a lot of attempt to create a Ruby virtual machine to, to gain performance of the Ruby language. And, uh, but uh, you know, the writing simple virtual machine is fairly easy. It's, it's a kind of practice for the, the CS students, undergrad CS student. But uh, the implementing real world virtual machine is the another story. The out of five or six attempt to create a Ruby virtual machine, only one survived, which is the YAV by Koichi Sasada. And uh, I contacted him, and I uh, welcomed him in core co developer, and uh, it gradually formed into the Ruby 1.9, and the Ruby 1.9 was released in year 2007, and uh, we had slightly, <laughs> slight <laughs> compatibility problems, but uh, yeah, even. 
that we take five or more years to be adopted. <laughs> but uh, we've done slightly better than Python 3. <laughs> slightly. <laughs> but no one suggested, but at least uh, no one su suggested to give up uh, Ruby 1.9 because of the compatibility problem. But how? How we have never thrown away everything, and uh, we have replaced one at a time. Replaced the string class to uh, implement the, the multilingualization, replaced the virtual machine, replaced the, the object representation, object the garbage collector. The, we, keep we kept compatibility as much as possible. So write test suite, so replace it, so the, the check the test suites to satisfy the, the old code. So the, and the, when we have to make a incompatible change, we prepare the migration path. So never try to drastic changes and then change it step by step. So the key we did uh, to you know, smoother, yeah, not really smooth though, but a smoother uh, migration, we did several uh, tricks. The first tricks is the versioning illusions, which means the Python 2 versus Python 3 the Pro 5 and Pro 6, but we had 1.8 and 1.9. <laughs> that makes feel you, you know, oh, this is nothing. <laughs> uh, not really, though. <laughs> the second trick is the we migration bait. Uh, moving to, to uh, 1.9 had huge benefit of performance. So the replacing it, replacing your Ruby into 1.9 outperformed the old code by a factor of two sometimes. Maybe in the, the biggest case, uh, the 50 times maximum. Well, great. So performance. So the, even though the migration change is pain, but the, if you knew, you, you can get the benefit. So the, you, you are, you know, it's okay to pay the, pay the price. So the, that kind of the benefit caused the motivation to move on. So the, as a rule of thumb, uh, to create a new system, new version of the language, don't throw away everything. Don't push too hard. Uh, provide you the benefit. Don't break compatibility for no reason. You know, you know the, your own satisfaction, like the cleaner syntax, the, the smaller syntax, or the finer code, or the debuggable, uh, simpler structure of the, your, uh, your program. The users don't care. So, the, the, but uh, if you break compatibility, the uh, you, you are, gives your user the huge pain. So if you don't provide any benefit, don't change, at least from the outside. But uh, we have to keep moving forward. So the Ruby 2.0 had almost perfect compatibility, along with the Ruby 1.9.3. But uh, as time goes by, the situation changed again, and we have the multi-core. So at the time I started Ruby uh, in 93, the, all the computer has only one CPU. And then at the time, the project YALF had started uh, in 2004, uh, 2004, so the, almost all the computer, at least for the personal computers, has one CPU per uh, device. But uh, these days, we have Dual core, quad core, octa core, or something, something cores, and many cores. So, and uh, this is a huge problem. So, you know, when we have only single core, no one cares about concurrency, just because you know concurrency is only for the, the program structure. But nowadays, the concurrency is the key to gain performance. So, if you split your your task into two then work uh, the assign these two tasks for each, uh, the, each course, so it would run two times faster in theory. 
So the mouse core is very crucial to gain performance these days. But uh, you know, the Ruby itself and the YALF is not designed mouse core in mind. And uh, the second part is code scalability. Uh, the, the, uh, the old days, the people uh, called uh, the, in the case, the object oriented programming uh, features don't, uh, doesn't need for scripting language, just because now these days the, la the program in scripting language is only uh, 10 lines, 100 lines, or maybe 1,000 lines of code. But uh, these days, the Rails application, including framework and the libraries, we have, I don't know, tens of thousands, thousands of lines of code, or maybe the million lines of code. That, that's quite huge. So the, that kind of code scalability we have to uh, address. Or well, data scalability, the, we have the, the C10K problem for a long, long time. And then we have a lot of, lot of access to our web servers. So we want to address those challenges. So we want to create a newer version of Ruby, named Ruby 3. But uh, I say we don't forget that rule, that which is don't worry everything, don't push too hard, the provide user benefit, don't pre compatibility for no reason. So we have started working in Ruby 3, so we have non-concrete idea yet, but uh, we are experimenting ideas. Some, some of them are very crazy ideas. And uh, we don't promise anything, but we do remember those rules again. Don't throw everything, don't push too hard, provide user benefit, don't break compatibility for no reason. So we are working for Ruby 3. The, the problem we want to address is the having multi-core in the computers, the core scalability and the data scalability. So the, to address that, uh, we do want to work on concurrency and the memory machine collaboration and the performance. To utilize multi-cores, we need concurrency. That should be abstract, simple, and easy to use. So the, we, provide, we already provide thread but the threat uh, to a primitive, it's quite difficult to use and easy to make errors. And it, it often introduces the non-deterministic errors. So that is uh, the fixing that kind of uh, error is kind of nightmare. So to, for concurrency, so we have several uh, candidates. Uh, more more, but uh, we want to be, make concurrent programming more productive. So the, these, we have these ideas, actor models, ownership models, STM, the streaming model. Actor model stands, uh, is the, you know, the actor model is pretty famous, share nothing and the nested passing. It's, it's uh, done by the language like Erlon, Elixir, and Scala, and Go. And the basic actor is quite easy. And it, it can be done by threads and mailbox. But uh, shell nothing is kind of hard for language like Ruby. So we have to address something like that. Ownership model is similar to Rust memory model. Uh, they use ownership to, uh, Rust use ownership to reclaim my memory. We use ownership for concurrency. So only uh, the thread owns object. So every object belongs to some some thread. So uh, when, when you have the ownership of the object, so you can uh, look inside of the object, you can modify the object. But you don't have the ownership, you cannot uh, access inside of the object. So the, the every object is opaque. So when, uh, when you pass your object to another thread, uh, through a queue or mess, uh, mailbox or something like that, you pass ownership as well. So that you, uh, the, the target threads or target actor or target something can modify the object. But uh, you cannot modify, you cannot see the object un until you, the, the object get back to you with its ownership. Uh, object can only be differenced by the thread that owns it. 
the path and object to other thread or actor along with its ownership. Uh, STM, I don't, I don't believe the S, uh, STM is a realistic solution for Ruby 3, though, but uh, I introduced it, it anyway. STM stands for the software transactional, transactional memory, which is uh, embodied by the, the language named Closure. Uh, we can share and change states, but when there's conflict, everything rolls back. Great. But uh, in, to implement this, so you, we have to we implement every object system and everything to, which can be rolled back. So that's quite high difficult. Yeah, insanely difficult to implement. So I, I cannot believe the closer people that did that. <laughs> yeah, it, it's amazing. Uh, the STM also had a uh, drawback, which is slow write intensive programs. The streaming model, which uh, is a kind of the build data flow pipelines and pour data into pipelines. For example, we, in the, the streaming model, we introduced new operator like a pipe, pipeline arrow. Um, like a, okay, this short program creates the pipeline from standard in to standard out. So this, this code only creates pipeline. Okay, then the, after program ends, so the program automatically uh, enter into the, the event loop. So event loop detect the input from the standard in to pass the data into standard out. So the, this is the simple echo server. So create a TCP uh, socket server, server socket, then the, the create a map so, so that the e you can process the each socket from the server socket. Then connect the socket socket to socket to, to make an echo server. Okay, simple net client goes like this, creates client socket, then they connect it from the standard in, then the output to the standard out, then enter into the event loop. So that we, in, in this case, we introduced a new operator, this one, I, I, don't, I don't know the name of the operator yet, then <laughs> that creates pipeline then enter into the event loop. So the normal Ruby code that creates pipeline, then thread safe event loop, event driven loop. So I call it the Rube Goldberg programming. <laughs> so I create the, yeah, the pipelines, then in the, in the event loop, the, uh, the ball goes like this. Da, 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 da. <laughs> or maybe okay go programming. Uh, it provides a thread safety, the object, the object immutable. Uh, so in the event loop, we have the second virtual machine runs, which, is, uh, which ev treats the every object as immutable so that you don't have to worry about the shared data. So we don't have to worry about the new, new jail in, in the second virtual machine. Everything immutable, uh, not covered 100% concurrency, but the win. At least we need the proof of concept. So I played with the experimental language, which is stream. I name it. The, so the perform, performance, the, we made the five to 10% faster each year, and then we have improved the garbage collector, we have improved the, uh, the virtual machine, we have improved the object representation, and, but uh, no one complains faster will be, right? So we need a goal to be reached. So that we come up with the, the goal, which I name it by Ruby three by three, which stands three times three. So that stands for Ruby three will be three times faster than Ruby two. <laughs> but to tell the truth, I have no concrete plan. <laughs> <laughs> But it's the goal. <laughs> we do everything we can. We can address by concurrency, better destruction, and algorithm, or just-in-time compiler, or maybe a higher time compiler. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. <laughs> <laughs> In this decade, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> this decade.
I want to make it Ruby 3, three times faster than Ruby 2, in the year of the Tokyo Olympic year, <laughs> make it three times faster than Ruby 2. But I lies, dumb lies, <laughs> and benchmarks. <laughs> And we have some uh, tricks and conscience. Uh, we will compare it with Ruby 2. Oh. <laughs> Just because we have made uh, improved a lot in the last few years, so we, we want to count them in. <laughs> and uh, we will pick some benchmarks. S small but not too artificial. It may consume more memory to gain performance, but uh, it, its mini, uh, minimum memory consumption uh, should be comparable to Ruby 2.0. We need more power, so we go at the, as a symbol of Ruby 3 times 3. So the, some companies are willing to sponsor us. So, for example, Appfolio. And yeah, thank you. In fact, Paul from Apfolio came up with the term Ruby 3 times 3, and uh, it, was, it impressed me a lot, so I, I took it <laughs> <laughs> as if it's my own idea. And uh, you know, Apfolio is willing to uh, sponsor us about uh, uh, Ruby 3 times 3. And uh, of course, Heroku. Heroku hired uh, small. the three main core developers. Well, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Heroku. <laughs> and uh, recently, I've heard IBM working on the, the technology named J9, which, is, which can be uh, in, uh, integrated into the MRI. And uh, it, they said it can run Rails in, uh, with JIT, with CRuby. That sounds terrific. And uh, I contact them so that they are going to give a presentation in Ruby Kaigi next month. So that I have to wait until December to, to uh, know the whole detail. But uh, I'm pretty wait for them. So uh, maybe we could have other sponsors. So welcome to, to help us. So a lot of people uh, contributed to Ruby, the community. So the many people wrote gems. So many people contributed the code, the pull request. And uh, as I said before, Ruby is no longer my, my language. It's a community effort. Lot, we, but uh, we still have a uh, lot of things to do. So the, make, the making benchmarks, providing knowledge, and uh, any crazy ideas to improve the Ruby three times faster than Ruby two. So, I really appreciate the sessions like a Ruby in depth. So the, the, we, I knew, I know the many people are willing to help us. So there are so many things you can do to improve Ruby, Ruby itself, faster, better. So, so we are welcome. And uh, we do see. So the C Ruby is written in C, so that, so that you can, you do not have to work on C. So I do, <laughs> we do. So, but uh, I invite some of you who are willing to work in C to, uh, and to fight with uh, performance, data structures, operating systems, and, uh, and uh, very tough tasks in C and in, in, in Ruby too. So the welcome to the world of the, the, the real. <laughs> so the C is very real. So it's hard. But the, the working on this desert of real world, so, so that you ca we can protect many people from suffering in the desert. <laughs> so if you have any idea, uh, opinion, and uh, the, the willing, Yes, so you contact me or Paul to, to make Ruby better, faster. So we do, we will do, make Ruby better, faster, cleaner, more powerful. But uh, 
if we, we have less power, so we need your power. Thank you. So we have about 10 minutes for questions. Um, I hope we have questions. Don't, please don't get up and go out yet. We still are, we're not done here. So I'm here and Marty's there. Who, who has questions for Matt's? Okay, come line up right here. <laughs> Nathan, you can go first. So Matt's, if, yes. if Ruby 3.3, 3 by 3 uh, meets its goals and you get 3x performance, that means that you can do lots of things that users don't like as well, right? So do you have plans to break some compatibility or things that you want to remove from the language in Ruby 3? Uh, yeah, the, in Ruby 3, we will break some compatibility, but uh, it, it, I, I don't think it will be big. <laughs> Mr. Committal up here. <laughs> Hello, um, I'm Benjamin. Hi. Hey. I try to be nice too. Um, so my question is, is that I, a lot of the development that I do is on GitHub, and I think most people here are familiar with a GitHub mm -hmm. uh, development flow working on uh, large applications such as Rails, and that there is a Ruby repo but in order to truly get involved with uh, and even reporting issues on Ruby core, I believe that it's a different workflow that involves both using the Redmine application and also understanding Japanese. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, and subversions. I was wondering if you could give like a very brief description for everyone here, just how we can just even open an issue for on the Ruby language itself. Yeah, uh, you don't have to speak Japanese to involve me in the Ruby development. And uh, the the most of the discussion is held in the, our Redmine, redmine.rubylang.org. And uh, the, for the historical reason, we we have developed long before the uh, GitHub happened. So the so, but uh, it's it's okay to create some. So pull requests and the issues in GitHub as well. But uh, we encourage you to use the Redmine in our site. Uh, the mostly because of uh, we, in, in our core developers, we have some kind of open source fanatic. So in what, according to them, so the GitHub is not really open source. Git is open source, but GitHub is not. So some refuses to create account to the, the proprietary services. <laughs> so for that reason, so we cannot fully move into the GitHub. So the, but uh, we will move into the Git at least, and uh, use Git as a, the primary uh, repository in, in, the, in the near future. So we have to set up some kind of the, uh, the uh, two surround, surrounding the, the issue trackers and something like that, but uh, the, we soon we will migrate into subversion, from subversion to Git. Uh, will you consider immutable persistent data structures for Ruby 3? Readable const, uh, that a closure map. Yeah, uh, we need more knowledge. So, <laughs> so the, if we we could have a contribution, we have some criteria. So if that that new kind new data structure has uh, satisfied that kind of criteria, so I'm willing to adopt that. I have a follow-on question because I have the mic. <laughs> Uh, are there any things that you've seen happen in the Ruby community in the last however long, mm -hmm. few years, that you want to bring into and make them part of the core language? Like gems that you thought, oh, we should really make this part. Like you said, the, do you mean 
was uh, was or was not an external mm -hmm. piece. Are there any other things that you uh, gems that you want to bring into the core language? Like uh, there are some persistent data structure gems, for instance. Uh, mm -hmm. You know the the biggest things I want to have in C Ruby is the something like the the single binary things like a, a M Ruby CLI or maybe Go one. So so that so that we can create a single binary, everything bundled together in, the, in a one binary. So that kind of things could happen. So that we, but, uh, but at the same time, I know that we have a lot of things to do to accomplish that. So yeah, we, we are uh, working step by step. So not so much a question, but a reminder of a project that I did that actually had a little bit of software transactional memory behavior for Ruby, if anybody wants to explore how we might do it in Ruby itself, and that's transaction simple, mm -hmm. uh, for which a modification of 1.9 was made to make that work better because it used, uh, it deep cloned everything to, in order to have the levels to transact. So that can give people a starting point to explore STM in Ruby if they want to play with that. Yeah. On GitHub, Halo statue, transaction simple, dash in there. I will check out. Uh, why did you make parentheses optional in Ruby? <laughs> <laughs> uh, to, to our spec possible. <laughs> that was that was too good. I, I can't follow that. Um, so uh, I know a lot of people just getting started programming um, don't necessarily have the same hardware like computers. I think I have not. I've only seen mostly Macs mm -hmm. here. Um, but people getting started have a lot of different systems and you, so you had an invitation for like, hey, we need more people looking into C and I also know that it's, there's very few people who are C programmers who also focus on Windows platform compatibility. Um, do, you, do you have any ideas how maybe we could increase uh, that? <laughs> increase what, diversity? <laughs> uh, just um, the Ruby experience on other platforms. Yeah, at, uh, at least we have the, the maintainer for each platform we support. So we have a Windows guy and a Mac OS guy and a, the Linux guy. And, and we have even the no, AIX guy. <laughs> so the, we are trying to do it. But uh, if the many people are, uh, are willing to help us, so I'm, I'm pretty happy. So for example, the, our AIX guy is pretty busy in IBM. <laughs> So the, if uh, they are willing to help and uh, possess the AIX machine, that is a problem. <laughs> and, uh, we, are, we, are, uh, we are very welcome to, to work together. Thank you. Hi, uh, I was at the MRuby Birds of a Feather and uh, the roadmap for MRuby came up and you mentioned that you keep it in your head. Um, is there anything that you could you know, sum up about where that project is headed and, and what the big goals are for mm -hmm. it? Yeah, the MRuby itself is, you know, has done what we want to provide, yeah, basically. So the, the, as a core, we only improve a little bit. For example, adopting the uh, Ruby 2 features or something like that. So the, this kind of the small problem. So, but, uh, the, the issue is the, the application. So the, the many people use MRuby for many purposes, like embedding in, say, vending machine, or uh, in the internet router, or web servers, or the your application, or maybe some, some say, editor extension uh, language or something like that. So the, that kind of usage is very crucial. So the, I want to help somebody has coming up with the ideas so that if they need help, which are we are willing to help uh, to, to, um, 
help them. So if they feel some kind of the obstacle or problem issues, so we are willing to fix them or improve the, improve the MRV for them. Yeah, we are even uh, microsatellites embedded in uh, embeds MRV. <laughs> So a related question, is there any plan to bring the syntax, uh, build some sort of correspondence between the, the CRuby syntax and the MRuby syntax so that we have some way of, of having code that corresponds in some cases? Uh, yeah, currently MRuby is 1.9 compatible, so it's, it's quite old. So the, uh, yeah, the, it's gradually adapting Ruby to syntax. So that we, I'm, yeah, next year I'm going to work on the adding the keyword syntax. Uh, argument in MRV. So the gradually we are moving forward. Uh, hi, Matt. I was wondering in Ruby 3 or 3 by 3, uh, what syntax are you going to use for the macro system? Uh, <laughs> uh, Okay, <laughs> I, I seldom uh, say promises about the, the, my software, <laughs> just because the future is unknown, the situation changes. But uh, I promise, I'm not, we're, gonna not, we're gonna have, we're not going to have macros in <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think this is gonna be yeah. our, our last question. But at least, at least, we, I, it's okay for me to provide AST from RubyCon. Uh, I just want to say I'm, I'm Paul from Apolio, and as, as Matt mentioned, is the guy. <laughs> uh, we're interested in making Ruby faster, and we're currently looking to, for C programmers or people who are into VMs or have worked on JVMs or V8, and if you're interested in making uh, Ruby faster, um, Matt's had my email up there, so get in touch with me and we'll see what we can do. Thanks. Yeah, he's even willing to hire. <laughs> I think that's a, good, that's a good place to stop. Let's give Matt a big hand.